G'day Chief, welcome to the Inner Chief Podcast and this special episode which we call The Mini Chief. These are short, sharp highlights from our fabulous CEO guests where you get a 5 to 10 minute snapshot of the highlights from their episode. Right, Chief, without further ado, here is The Mini Chief episode for this week with Mike Schneider, Managing Director of The Bunnings Group. You've got the four H's of authenticity, which are close to your heart. Let's just talk about those briefly if we can. Um, The four H's are honest, humble, helpful, and happy. And this is, a, uh, I suppose, a bit of a a guiding set of principles for you and the way you conduct yourself at work. Can you talk us through those those four? Maybe start with with honest and and humble. Yeah, I I might even go one step back if I can, which is Mm -hmm. sort of arrived at the four H's as a way of thinking about expressing who I am as a person, who I am as a leader, and also how it integrates into the culture of our organization. So I touched earlier on our on our leadership model and, and I was always looking for ways to, you know, convey points of view in a fairly simple in a fairly simple way. I'm very privileged that Bunnings to lead a team of over forty three thousand team members. You know, the reality is that inside that team it's as big as a large country town. We've got team members who can't read and write or can't read and write very well. We've got team members who don't speak English as a first language and a whole myriad of, of ways that people take information. And, and I think it's John Eels, and, and I may be wrong when I quote, quote it, but if you can make the complex simple and the simple compelling, then it's a really important communication tool. And I found using really simple language a really important way to do that, not because it's dismissive, but it's more inclusive. You know, so for me, the four H's were a very simple way of outlining what I stood for as a leader. And as I said, we're all human, so you get things right and you get things wrong. But you know, being honest is really important. You know, people... As a leader, you need to have deep trust. People often create trust or respect in a job title before they even know a person, and leaders cast a really long shadow. And if you're going to say things that aren't true, um, consciously or unconsciously or deliberately, or even if it's a little white lie, then you have to own that. And I think being honest is a really simple premise because people know what they're getting. They may not like the feedback they're receiving, but if they know that it's coming from a good place or with good measure, and it's honest, open, and candid, then I think that's really important. And I think it builds trust. Um, It builds trust with um, our parent business, it builds trust with our team, it builds trust with regulators. And honesty means admitting when you get it right and admitting when you get it wrong. And I think that's a really important thing in business. I think a lot of time, you know, there'll be sort of weasel words, if you like, applied to to sort of get out of sticky situations and and represent things without accepting that that you get things wrong. And, you know, the thing we say constantly about the business and about ourselves as leaders is we're not perfect. We make mistakes every day. And one of the hardest things as a CEO to accept is that, Every single day, many of our stores, something's not going right. It may not be going right for a customer. It may not be going right with a product. It may not be going right for one of our team. We never set out for that to be the case. And we'll always seek to put it right as soon as we know about it. But if you can make a conscious choice to do things the right way, then then honest really comes to life. Humble is a funny one, you know, for me, because it's a little bit of of me as a person and my upbringing, you know, Fibro House and a Datsun 180B is is a pretty straightforward way to start a life. And, and there's hundreds of thousands of other Australians and New Zealanders who've had an upbringing similar. So it's nothing special, but it's just who I am. But it also speaks to our brand. You know, I love the fact that when people talk about Bunnings, they talk about their local Bunnings store. You know, we are a, a, a large business. We're in a very competitive market. We have lots of different players out there that can, can sell products and services that we sell. So we recognize that our, our customers have a choice and we want them to choose to drive to a Bunnings store or click on, on our website because they believe that, that our brand and our offer will do something for them that makes their home or their business a better place to be. And we're really proud of that, but we don't need to shout it from the mountains. We just need to double down on our efforts to do more. And I think from a leadership point of view, we work really hard to have a very low profile as executives in Bunnings. Partly it lets you live your life without reading about yourself in the newspaper or um, seeing yourself on a TV show. But equally, I think it's about letting the brand and the team do the talking. You know, I'm, I'm really privileged to, to have the capabilities in our organisation that I have and, and to lead that team. And the real heroes in our business are the team that are pulling on a, a red shirt and tying on an apron every day and caring for our customers or moving stock around or, or you know, in some factory in, in some part of the world, identifying great products to bring to life for our customers. They're the real heroes of our business. The rest of us you know, get to play a supporting role in actually helping them do their job and make their job easy. And I think the second you start to believe your own press, you're in a, in a world of trouble. And there's hundreds of case studies on that 
mm. all around the world with CEOs. Yeah, I noticed that this building we're in here is not called the head office, it's called the store support office. Is that quite deliberate? It's very deliberate mm. and um, everything we do is to serve our customers and, mm. you know, it's you know, people often ask what you do and, and, you know, I like the term that one of my colleagues from Support Centre who sadly passed away at the end of last year talked about, which was, uh, you know, our job is to sell more hammers and we don't say that as a, as a throwaway line but the reality is that, you know, if you're not serving a customer in a store, then you're serving someone who is and that's a mindset for our whole support team. And my job and the job of every leader in Bunnings is to actually make everyone else's job easier, not to make our own easier. So that often brings a, a bit of a toll on, on time and effort and time on the road. But that's that's how you actually run, you know, a business that has a winning offer and, and keeps a team that's really engaged. And that's a helpful part too, right? The, H, the yeah. next H being the helpful one of... Are you being helpful to people that, you know, that are really doing the hard work? Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about a service culture that's friendly and helpful. So I think you know, one of the things I love hearing about when people talk about a business is, is the quality of the team and, and the willingness of our team to engage. And again, you know, it comes with the caveat that we're not always perfect and we make mistakes and people have bad days and don't deliver the best service. But the way you often hear people talk about, you know, care or helpfulness is, you know, treat other people the way you want to be treated. And I think for me, that's always fallen a little bit short because I think as human beings, we put up with things during the day. You put up with a grumpy partner or a grumpy boss or a grumpy teammate or a grumpy customer and you absorb that because actually as human beings, we're designed to be compassionate and empathetic towards other people. I think the downfall of that is that sometimes we can be a bit grumpy ourselves. You kind of come from the mindset that, well, I put up with this nonsense sometimes, so maybe you, you can just in this instant. So the way I talk about it is treat other people the way you want your loved ones treated. Um, so there's a whole lot of things that I'll put up with myself, but if it's you know someone that I care about or, or one of my kids, it's a very different lens, and and the bar raises very very quickly. So um, you know when I think about problems that a team member might bring to me or problems that a customer might bring to me, I sort of think about it: if they were one of my family members or they were someone I really cared about, what would I want the outcome to be? Um, and you usually come up with a much better outcome than perhaps what you you think about yourself. So that's where where that's a, that's a nice subtle from. change. It really raises the bar, right? It I, does. I quite yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. and and the last one's happy, and and that was a really interesting one. You know, over the the last few years, both my parents passed away, and a heap of things change in your in your personal life. And and what you realise is that no matter what your belief system and no matter what your your faith may or may not be. The reality is the the life you're living in the body you're living in it will actually end one day. Um, and we all, want, we all want that to be as far off into the future as it can possibly be with as much health and happiness on the way through. But, but in recognising that, you need to make the most, I believe, of every opportunity that you're given and be grateful for those. So you're grateful for the tough things that, that challenge you to be a stronger person and actually live enough in the moment to value the things that, that mean the most and to surround yourself with people that you want to be with and that want to be with you and really actually you know, get, get what you're trying to achieve. And that can be hard because sometimes you end up with people in your life that you know, mean the world to you, but maybe just aren't aren't right for you in that particular point in time or aren't aren't you know, you've moved to a different phase in your life. So I think you just need to not not just live in the moment because we all need to plan for the future, but certainly not dwell on the past too much, other than to maybe inform your thinking about decision making, but but do things that actually create satisfaction and joy in your life. And I think you can find that in work, you can find it in sport, you can find it in in almost any aspect of your life, particularly around family and friends. Um, and have a good laugh and, and, and not take yourself too seriously. And I think that sort of, for me, allows me, when I connect and talk to the team about the four H's or, or talk more publicly as I am today about it, to sort of frame up what sort of makes me tick a little bit as a, as a person and as a leader. Chief, there you have it for this week with our mini Chief episode. All the links and resources can be found at chiefmaker.com forward slash 347. Now, are you in need of an operating rhythm. An operating rhythm is that schedule of meetings. Actually, it's a bit more than that. It's a system, the drum and beat of your team. And what it will do if you get it right is it will create the culture, drive the results. It will bond the team together. It will handle risk, help you see around corners, create creativity, embed the rituals and traditions of your team. There is so much that an operating rhythm can deliver when done right. So Chief, If you'd like to know how to do that, just get our full free resource on it. Just go to chiefmaker.com forward slash operating rhythm. And there's a detailed PDF there with all the hows and what's and why, some of the pitfalls, and an example schedule for you to follow. Chiefmaker.com forward slash operating rhythm. 
and create the drumbeat for success in your team. And if you would like to stay in touch and hear all about some of the best resources that you can find anywhere in the world to improve your performance at work, go to chiefmaker.com forward slash subscribe. Now, Chief, if you're yet to rate the episode and subscribe, I hope you'll do so soon. It helps others see the magnificent value that the chiefs and gurus bring to their life and career. So make sure you hit subscribe on your podcast app now. Give it a five-star rating if you think it's worthy and leave a short review about your favorite episode. Righto Chiefs, as always, remember to stay epic.